In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and from into the age of all ages, amen. Welcome back on our study series regarding the Orthodox Creed. Um, if this is your first time joining us, we're doing an in-depth uh, reflection on the Creed of Faith. Um, and we spoke so far about uh, why do we need a creed, um, the theology relating to God the Father. We talked about the Holy Trinity, um, one essence, three persons. <clears throat> and now we're kind of going deeper into um, the, the understanding of the person of the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, so uh, this is our fourth lecture. Um, and God willing, we're about almost halfway um, relating to um, this series. Uh, we kind of divided the creed into three main parts, um, which relates to us, number one, who is God? Um, and we are basically um, ending this portion of the creed <clears throat> um, today um, by focusing on the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then um, we are going to stop, start talking, God willing, next time more about the action of God or the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ in particular, um, starting with his incarnation that might take the whole talk next time. And then the, the salvation and redemption that we have in, in the person of Jesus Christ. Um, and then finally, we'll conclude with the Holy Spirit and what he has given us through the church and the sacraments. <clears throat> so this is kind of like our, the structure of, of this series, if you will. Um, <clears throat> but today we'll speak a little more, and this is probably one of the main um, uh, events that nudged the church to form a council and to write um, the, the, down the creed was because there were a lot of heresies or false teachings relating to our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the creed focuses on this. Um, maybe out of about, they say that 101 Greek words or so um, in the creed, uh, about 84 of them are relating to the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, this is in the original uh, Greek language. Um, so obviously this is an important aspect of uh, what the creed uh, speaks to us about. So, um, God willing, today we'll focus on this portion. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, or not made in some translations, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made. <clears throat> and some of this, as we'll see, is, is a little bit repeated um, from, from last time when we spoke of the Lord God the Father being Lord, being um, Almighty, being uh, the Creator, um, and, and being of one essence with the Son. And so th there might be a little overlap, but we'll focus more on um, the portions that uh, we haven't discussed yet. Okay, <clears throat> so um, let's uh, start by the grace of God. So um, the first aspect that we say is we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and some people say, um, well, is he Lord or is he God? And he, yes, both are um, reflections of his divinity. Um, and some people say, well, that's because the church or whoever wrote this is putting um, Jesus Christ at a lower level than God the Father. And that's, of course, heresy. We don't believe in that. Um, but one of the first ways or expressions that the early Christians used to refer to um, God, his divinity, um, was master. And that's why in the church we always say, that's, that's saying, Lord have mercy, not God have mercy. Um, of course, some people say there's no difference here. Um, and theologically, that is true. But when we look in scriptures, you know, even in the Hebrew language, as, as we said before, there's um, Jehovah, there's Adonai, which the Jews were not, you know, they didn't find it worthy even to mention that name. So they would refer to God, in, not as Adonai or God, but as Jehovah, our Lord. <clears throat> um, and in the scripture, um, in the Old and New Testament, and here are many verses in the New Testament of, of using both terms. The Lord, um, like um, St. Thomas, the disciple on the, the day that, uh, of Thomas Sunday, the eighth day after the resurrection, 
uh, the Lord appeared to the 12 disciples. <clears throat> and St. Thomas proclaimed, you are my Lord and my God, right? So some people say the Lord is more in reference to um, the personal relationship uh, as this is my master. Um, and he's the, the, the one who um, I submit to as the ruler of my life versus God is more the one who I worship. Um, and so that's an understandable way of looking at it. Um, so God, God is both to us, right? He is the one we worship, but he also the one we, we make him ruler of, our, of, of my life. Um, and so that's why both terms are important and one is not less than the other. Um, having said that though, uh, as you may know in like um, medieval translations, you know, Lord was just also um, uh, uh, an expression of um, respect, right? But here, we, this is not just a term of respect. <laughs> this, is, this is a term that relates to God and God Almighty. Right, so Saint Paul uses this as well in First Corinthians. They, for had the Jews known, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of Glory. He didn't say God of Glory; he said Lord of Glory, which is the same thing because he is God. Um, and the Lord says, "Well, or Lord God says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Because the person who ascribes someone as Lord, they obey." Right. So here is a reflection more of um, how it relates in our personal life versus how it relates in our spiritual life, right? And, and both are connected. <clears throat> um, and then in John 13, 13, he says, you call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for you, so I am. Uh, for, for so I am. <laughs> I am here referring to um, his godly nature. So, um, and then St. Peter in his uh, sermon on the day of Pentecost, he says, okay, this Jesus whom you crucified, right, that the man that you know by this name, um, God the Father has made him both Lord and Christ. And we'll talk about Christ in a minute. But here, again, he's, he's um, in one sentence here, even part of a sentence, uh, St. Peter, through the Holy Spirit, is uh, combining all of these terms for the Lord, Jesus Christ, God, <laughs> right, which is uh, very beautiful. And this is how the Holy Spirit works in, in Scripture and in, in the service. Okay, um, so now let's unpack a little the name Jesus. I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but just to clarify, then what does the name Jesus mean? Um, it simply means Savior. Where do we get this? From Scripture, right? Um, and St. Paul says to the Philippians, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Those in heaven, uh, because the angels and archangels and all the heavenly hosts worship God and worship the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? And also those on earth, we, we bow, we worship when, uh, the, when um, we, uh, we have the Lord Christ in our midst, especially during the liturgy, right? Um, <clears throat> when the Archangel Gabriel came to the Holy Virgin Mary, um, uh, and also when he announced uh, to Joseph uh, the, the birth of Christ, right? He says, she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus. Why? For he will save his people. So here's the connection of what the name means and who the Christ is, the one who is to save us. Um, and we'll talk more about the redemption, like I said, um, in uh, the next lecture or two. Um, also, uh, the apostles, when they are preaching those to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They said, God the Father raised up for Israel a Savior who is also um, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so um, I, I don't want to belabor this point too much. Yes, it's a, a respectful title. And in the church, we use it as a respectful title because we don't necessarily consider it appropriate to just even like uh, when we refer or when we speak to God or we, we usually say or prefer to use him, the title, our Lord Jesus Christ, or Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, or like in the liturgy of St. Cyril, our Lord God, Savior, and King of us all, <laughs> Jesus Christ, right? But just to say Jesus, yeah, if you're on a first name basis, some people might consider that okay. But out of respect and honor, we, we, we add um, these, these titles because he is close and he loves us very much as father, but 
he also deserves respect, at least, you know, um, in, 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 as much as we can uh, offer to him. <clears throat> so um, that's pertaining to the name um, Jesus, right? Um, and this is one of the main purposes of his incarnation was salvation. Um, well, what about the name Christ? Um, so he, the literal translation of the word Christ is Messiah or Messiah in Arabic, right? The one who is anointed. Um, and again, this relates to not only the physical anointing by the Holy Spirit, right? That uh, used to happen in the Old Testament with the kings and the priests and the prophets, but the Lord Jesus Christ is above the every, he's King of Kings, he's Lord of Lords, right? He is the great high priest and he is the fulfillment of the prophecies, right? But at the same time, we say, yes, he is anointed in a sense by God the Father through God the Holy Spirit to be the savior of the world and to be the one to take flesh. And he is above all mankind. He is the perfect man, right? The, the perfect God became perfect man, right? <clears throat> so uh, in, in Isaiah, the Lord used this um, uh, verse in I, Isaiah when he was in the, the synagogue, right? And he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Here again there is another verse of the Holy Trinity, right? He has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, not with oil, but with the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, <clears throat> and many times we see in, in the gospel, the apostles, um, uh, whether it's Simon Peter or St. Thomas um, or um, uh, Martha, right? Yes, Lord, I believe that you are Christ, the Son of God, right? Who is to come into the world. I believe you're the Messiah. I, I believe that you are God incarnate. And as you know, you know, the, the, the Jews who follow the Old Testament, you know, still to this day, they're waiting for the Messiah because they don't believe the Lord Jesus Christ was that fulfillment. So this was a very, he is the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies, which spoke of this anointed one to come. Okay. And that's why we, we prefer to, 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 to use Lord Jesus and Christ all in one package because each name means a different thing and reflects a different aspect of who the Lord Jesus Christ is. And so that's why um, the, the, the church and the gospel um, has these important names, uh, which, which remind us of what our relationship with God should be. He should be our Lord. He should be in charge of my life. He is my savior, right? And he is the, the one who um, is, is directed to not only uh, be the, the anointed one to save me, but also we are anointed by his name, right? We're all called after his name. We're, we're called, called Christians, right? <clears throat> uh, St. Cyril of Jerusalem says he is called by at least these two names, Jesus Christ. Jesus because he saves and Christ because he is a priest, right? The anointed, as we said, the, the, um, the one who was anointed is in the Old Testament usually was because he was a priest, a prophet, or a king, or all the, Christ is all the above right? Um, and he is the great high priest who not only sacrifices, but he is the sacrifice. Um, <clears throat> and St. Gregory, the theologian, he says, Christ is son of man um, on account of Adam and on account of the virgin from whom he came because he took flesh. And we'll talk more about this uh, Christology um, or studying, you know, in depth who, who, who Christ is and the unity between his humanity and divinity uh, a little bit later. Right, but that's why he's called Son of Man, and he, he this was one of the main names that he preferred to call himself in the gospel, right? Out of humility, um, and he, but he is Christ because of his Godhead, right? He is the way because he leads us through, uh, throughout the through himself. He is the door since he lets us in, and he is the shepherd for he makes us dwell in green pastures, right? So there are many names for God, but Lord. Jesus and Christ are probably um, the best descriptions of the second person um, of the Holy Trinity, as we said. Okay. Um, the next name we call him is Omologinis, right? The only begotten or the only begotten son of God. <clears throat> um, and 
again, if you go to the gospel according to St. John, all of this will be very, um, or even the epistles that he wrote, all of this will be very second nature to you because um, this is one of the, the main focuses of the gospel according to St. John is the divinity of Christ or who Christ is, Christology, the study of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, especially his divinity. Um, and so St. John uses a lot of these phrases that we, we can find and, and he didn't come up with them by himself, but he just quoted what the Lord said. Um, so for example, in John 1, we see these verses, uh, chapter 1 and chapter 3, um, we see these names a lot, right? So the Lord says in chapter 1, no one has seen God at any time. The only, like we were saying before, God, the Father, is um, the nature of God. He's indivisible, right? Um, he is indescribable. He is without limits, right? And he is spirit. But when the Lord Jesus Christ took flesh, it says, the only begotten of the Son of God, right, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. You can see him now because he took flesh, right? Um, <clears throat> and um, something we have to keep in mind, the distinction that the Father has always explained to us, is that the way Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is different the way that you and me are children of God, right? He is Son of God by nature, from the beginning of time, like we were saying last time, um, the begotten of the Father before all ages. And we'll kind of tie that in um, uh, here, right? Um, but we, as Christians, we are adopted. Uh, why? Because after the fall, we fell, right? Um, we lost, um, we were created in the image and likeness of God, but it was distorted due to sin. Right? And the Lord Jesus Christ had to take flesh in order to restore that. So um, we are grafted into that olive tree or into the nature of, of, of Christ after, through grace, through his forgiveness and his love and his mercy. Um, but the Lord Jesus Christ from day zero, not even day one, from before any of the days of the creation, right? he was one with God the Father. Um, <clears throat> and um, Again, if you doubt this, maybe reading the, the gospel according to St. John will, will be of some benefit. Um, so like, for example, verse, um, especially chapter one, but like verse 114, right? Uh, we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, right? Um, or John 3.16, I'm sure you already know that he, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, the, the, so there's, there's no other son like Christ, right? He is the, um, the only, one and only son of God. Not in the same way as we have uh, children, um, but this is light from light, uh, true God from true God, as we'll get into in a minute, right? Um, just a few um, more quotes from the Father St. Gregory, the theologian. In speaking of Christ, he says, he is the living image of his father. He alone is the son of the one who is without beginning, the unique son of the unique or the only God, equal in excellence. Okay, He is called son because he is identical with the father in essence, like we were saying before, right? Um, he has as much God as God the father, right? Some people will dilute the understanding of God saying, okay, God is divided into three and um, the Holy Spirit is only one third of God. It's like, that doesn't make sense, right? Oh, because one third plus one third equals, plus one third equals one. No, we say one times one times one equals one. If you have one, you have all three um, because the three are united um, in a mysterious and a perfect way, right? Um, and that's why we say they are one essence. Um, he is called only begotten because he's the only son of the only father. Um, and that's, um, that's what the term only begotten son basically um, refers to, okay? Um, when we say before all ages, this is again in reference to his divinity because as we said, he, God is timeless. So there was never a time, and this is to respond to what Arius was saying, that, oh, he became Christ after the, or even during the incarnation, or some of the heresies said um, when he was baptized, 
um, by John the Baptist and the Holy Spirit came upon him, then he became Christ or then he became God. It was like, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. He was God before he took flesh, right? In the beginning, or whenever that was, before the beginning of the world, right? Um, and John chapter one, verse one, in the beginning was the word Logos or Christ. And the word was with God, God the Father here. And the word was God because Christ is God, right? So this is, it's not a play on words, but here St. John is saying, okay, Christ, the only begotten Son of God, was one with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit in the very beginning of time, okay, or before time, sorry. Um, he was in the beginning with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and the Lord Jesus Christ himself said, before Abraham was, I am, okay. Um, and when he speaks to God the Father on uh, in the day of Gethsemane, in the day, the night before his crucifixion, right? He prays to God the Father, saying, "Now, o Father, glorify me together with you, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Before the world was created, I was one with you, and I had the same glory as you, well, because He is the only begotten Son of God, before all ages." Um, okay, so from His own mouth, He is He is saying that. Um, his existence did not start at the incarnation, but from the beginning. Okay, um, if that's not the case, then he's not God. And if he's not God, then what are we doing? <laughs> right? This whole this whole uh, Christianity thing is pointless if he's not God. Right? Um, <clears throat> Saint Cyril of Jerusalem uh, also says uh, Saint Jerus I'm quoting a lot from him because uh, we have a lot. Thank God, we have a lot of his. The sermons and homilies and teachings that he was responsible for training as many of the bishops were in the early church um, preparing people for baptism um, adults and and educating them and making sure they have the faith especially the creed uh, known well inside and out um, and without doubt so that they could be ready for baptism okay um, so saint cyril writes saying he was begotten from the beginning Son of God, Son of the Father, above being above all beginning and all ages, because he, he's above time. He is the Son of the Father in all things like him, right? Um, who begot him, eternal of the eternal Father, life of life begotten, light of light, truth of truth, wisdom of the wise, king of king, God of God, and power of power. So obviously, he's the, he is um, of the same essence, is, is what he is saying in a, in a beautiful way. Um, I, I don't think I can add to, 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 to this reference, okay? Um, another nice quote from St. John Chrysostom. He says, well, someone might ask, how can Christ be a son without being younger than the Father? And unfortunately, in some um, other churches, in their uh, artwork or iconography even sometimes, um, they make the Father look really old, right? With the long gray or white beard, Right, and the son look, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, thirty-three years old. Right? Oh, this is the father. This is the son. In Orthodox or in Coptic Orthodox iconography, we we don't we don't um, put, portray the image of the father. Why? Because Christ is the image of the father. Right? Um, we just write down he is the voice from heaven um, because that's how he appeared in Old and New Testament. Um, so anyway. Um, I digress. But here he says, um, St. John Chrysostom says, although, so he, the fathers use this beautiful example, okay? What, remember how he was saying uh, one analogy of the Holy Trinity is the, um, the sun, S-U-N, a uh, star a billion miles away or however many, <laughs> far away. Um, and what emanates from the sun is light and heat, right? Um, and so the fathers take this example and say, okay, um, the, the star it could be in reference to God the Father because he is the source of the Godhead, right? Um, and that's his role in the Holy Trinity. Um, but the radiance or the light that comes out from the sun is the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it says, because it comes out from the sun, right? Just like the sun came from the Father, right? It was, he was begotten of the Father. Um, says, we can assert that it is in a later time than 
so was there ever a time when, okay, let's say I have the sun, right? Does that mean, is there ever a time where the sun was and there was no light? I, I don't know about scientifically, but that doesn't make any sense to us, right? So it also doesn't make any sense that there was never a time where there was a father and there was not the son or not the Holy Spirit, right? Um, and, and this is why we said he is the image, he is the express image, or he is um, the, the, the light of the father. Um, uh, and that's why he said there is no interval of time between son and father. Um, so before time, in the beginning, whenever that was, we have Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It wasn't Father and then Son and then Holy Spirit. No, that, that's not what the church uh, believes. And that's not what God teaches us through scripture and, and through the tradition of the church. Um, going back to that idea, light of light. Um, I don't know if I explained this example before, but it's kind of like if you have a candle, like full of, you know, fire um, and light. Um, if I want to light another candle, um, that second candle in property is not any less more of a candle than the first, right? Speaking at least of the, of the fire, right? Um, so th this was one um, way of understanding how uh, the Son is begotten of the Father, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father, but um, they are still three in one, um, one in essence, one in glory. No one has more glory or honor than the other. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so um, in, in the, again, the first chapter of the gospel according to St. John, um, Christ says he was not that light. He's not the light of the world. Christ is the light of the world, right? But he was sent to bear witness of the light. He was sent to, you know, prepare the way for people to believe that Christ is God. That was the true light which is, gives light to every man coming uh, into the world, okay? So here we're talking of the spiritual light. Um, and like uh, St. Paul says, you know, God alone has immortality and he dwells in inapproachable light, um, whom, whom no man can see or, or has seen, right? Um, so light, we can talk on and on, uh, you know, uh, philosophically about, you know, how light is the source of life and so on and so forth. But um, these are just some things we contemplate to help us understand more of the divinity of God. Okay, um, we'll kind of leave it at that. Um, and that's why the church says light from light or light of light and true God of true God. Um, I think it goes without saying, right? <laughs> so after all we've said, yeah, obviously Christ is true God of true God, right? Um, and here again are just some references uh, proclaiming that Christ is God. And this is one of the main points of scripture, at least of the New Testament, right? Um, <clears throat> and the, the fathers commented, you know, a lot, especially on these verses. Um, I, I think we can unpack some of these, you know, at a later time. But I like the, the last verse here in Colossians, where St. Paul says, in him, in Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead, bodily. What is he saying here? He's fully God in his person, okay? Um, and he, he took flesh, right? Um, and again, he doesn't have half of the glory of God, right? Or a third, but all the fullness, um, it's very beautiful when you think of it. Um, and again, another quote from St. Gregory of Nyssa, he says, for as he is light from light, life from life, good from good, and wise, just, strong, and all else in the same way, so most certainly is he eternal from eternal. So this goes back to the point where he's saying, begotten of the Father before all ages, right? He is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Maybe one day we'll get to positive infinity, but we never started at negative infinity. We started at a certain point when we were created. Okay. <clears throat> and if you want to know what I mean by that, we spoke about that a couple lectures ago when we were talking about how God is above time. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> um, this is one of the most important phrases, why I think the Council of Nicaea was gathered and why the, the creed was written to begin with, because the Arian heresy um, was saying 
uh, Christ was created. He, and they misused the, the phrase in scripture that says he is the firstborn of all creation, saying, oh, he was born. He is created. So, you know, he is God. He is the creator, <laughs> right? Um, <clears throat> and um, St. Athanasius was one of the leaders at this time to, um, to, to refute the, this heresy. And he wrote a lot about this. Obviously, he focused a lot of his um, writings and teachings around this point. Um, and so he says, God is by nature invisible and incomprehensible. Again, a couple lectures ago, we, we spoke of this. Having his being beyond all created existence, for which reason the race of mankind was likely to miss the way to the knowledge of him. How can we understand God if he is above all and he's hard to understand and he's limitless and he's timeless and he's invisible? It's like, Okay, it's, it's very easy for someone not to grasp God because by definition, we can't contain him, right? So he says, um, <clears throat> and he says, since they are made out of nothing, well, he is unmade, right? He is, you know, um, not created. Um, and so I, I think in uh, another place we said that's why he took flesh another reason why he took flesh is so we could begin to understand the mystery of god even even more a little bit more <laughs> right um <clears throat> okay i have one essence with the father again i think i already kind of uh, hit on this point but um uh like you know the quote in philippians here right he he was being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation. And this is talking more about the incarnation, right? Taking the form of a bondservant, man, right? And coming in the likeness of men, right? And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. Okay, <clears throat> the last part is, again, a, a, a retouching of what we were speaking of last time relating to God the Father as creator. We say, well, also the Son, because he is of one essence with God the Father, he also participated in the creation. Um, and St. Uh, John mentions that again in John chapter 1, but also St. Paul mentions it in the Colossians chapter 1. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were made created through him and for him. And I think last time also we mentioned how, you know, through him is through God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but for him, for Christ, right? Because he is the firstborn above all creation. And what I mean by that reference, um, and the fathers help us explain that reference, saying he's not created, but because he took flesh, he is, you know, um, he above all creation, right? But he, he participated in um, or he united that creation with himself, which is very, uh, not just mysterious, but very beautiful out of his love for us. He, 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 he took our form. That's a big deal. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. Um, I think next time we'll go into this part. Um, but like just kind of to start you off, um, some people call us monophysites, right? Um, and what does that mean? that basically denies one of the natures of Christ. We're saying that Christ is fully God and fully man in one person, right? And we say, no, we, we believe in the unity of the two, okay? Um, sim simply, and that's what miaphysite means. Um, and I, I'll, I'll just start you off with this and the God willing next time we'll con continue on this point. But uh, for example, St. Ephraim the Syrian, he says, above and below there were two harbingers for the sun right? The star of light so in, in uh, the nativity scene, right? We have the star, right? The star of light shouted out joyfully from above, and John proclaimed from below, John the Baptist, right? Two messengers, one earthly, uh, one earthly, one heavenly, right? The heavenly one showed his nature that is from God's mouth because he's God, right? The earthly one also showed his nature from humanity because he is man, right? Christ, we're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what a great wonder that his divinity and his humanity were announced by the star and by the, the Baptist. Um, whoever considered him earthly, the star of light would convince him that he's heavenly, right? 
And whoever considered him just a spiritual, which was another heresy, he didn't really take flesh. St. John would convince him that, no, he, he, took, he took a body, right? And so this is the, the orthodox understanding of who Christ is. He's God, he's man, and one perfect person, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Um, so that's just something kind of to, um, to think of and contemplate on uh, until next time. Um, okay, so God willing, uh, next time we'll, we'll continue on the incarnation, um, the next part of the creed, you know, who for us men and for our salvation, that's the soteriology, the salvation um, study, um, took flesh, right? That's the incarnation. Um, so before we talk about the salvation, we say, okay, the, the first main step in the incarnation, uh, in the salvation was to take our form and why. Um, so God willing, we'll continue with that until next time. God be with you and bless you.